Hi everybody, welcome to another installment of Panasonic Tech Talks. The Tech Talk today is titled The AI of Augmented Reality HUDs. So I'm Scott Kirchner, I'm the president of Panasonic Automotive System Company of America. Uh, we're a big HUD supplier to the auto industry and I'm here with Gene Karshenboim, who is the new CEO of Fire. I've known Gene for a while, but for three months ago you became the CEO of Fire. We were working with Fire before you joined. Um, but every since you joined, I think it's accelerated and we, we, we love the continued relationship, Gene. So Gene, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it uh, for you taking the time out of your busy schedule and, and participating in this for me. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for having us. Very excited to continue working together, building really interesting, cool tech for automotive. Thank you. Hey, so let me kind of start this by tying this back to a tech talk we did last year. So for CES timing last year, uh, myself and one of our user experience engineers, uh, Sachiko, we did a talk generally on AR HUDs and talked a lot about the problems it's trying to solve. And what we kind of focused on in the beginning there was, you know, you've said this, I've said this, it's kind of becoming cliche now, but the cockpit of a vehicle is becoming like an F-15 fighter. Um, maybe not as good as an F-15 fighter, right? So we're sitting in that seat and there's all sorts of bells, whistles, bings and bongs and lights flashing at us and you know, screens with different information on it. And as a driver, we're trying to take all that in, make sense of it, try to understand what the vehicle is trying to tell us, trying to figure out what we need to do to stay safe. And there's this just kind of huge cognitive load put on the driver. Um, which can lead to all sorts of uh, unfortunate events, right? And so, you know, we really believe that the idea of HUDs in general and AR HUDs in specifics can really begin to make that more natural, right? Understand the hazards around the vehicle, understand what the vehicle is trying to tell you more intuitively, and therefore reduce the cognitive load, take safe reaction faster, and uh, generally be safer. Um, so this is a, you know, a big theory of ours that we're working hard on. And, and you guys are bringing a lot of technologies in that same vein. And you told me a story one time about the evolutions of maps that I just thought was a great story. So I want to give you a chance to tell that story because I think it really you know, explains what you guys are doing and why it's so cool. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, it's interesting if you look at today at navigation, we have really big screens in cars. Uh, mapping is really sophisticated, but if you really kind of squint and think about what you're looking at, you're fundamentally still looking at a paper map, right? Um, yes, there's a blue dot that tells you where you are. Yes, it changes as you drive. But initially, if you remember many years ago, you were looking at a paper map, right? And you had to find where you wanted to go and kind of plan your route. Um, and then uh, many years later, we got this amazing route planning tool called MapQuest, and that gave you the turn by turn, but fundamentally you still had to map the real world to the turn by turn directions. And then we got those amazing 2D windshield garments that we got. And we, they would drive us places and give us turn by turns live, which was incredible and do re rerouting, but still, it's still a map. And then, you know, that kind of display came into the cars at first with small displays and bigger displays and bigger displays, but fundamentally it was still a map in the car. And even with the initial HUDs, it was still turn by turns just in the HUD. And what we've built fundamentally at, at Fire is we, sense the entire world around you and then we just show you where to go so all that cognitive load about trying to figure out where you are where the car is what's the next turn what's around you we offload all that to the computer processor and simply point you to the path where to go what's the next turn and also give you warnings for example if there's somebody crossing the street uh, if there is a construction cone and um, you know if you're pulling out of your lane so we have lane departure warnings and all the whole idea here is to low to lower the load on the driver to allow them to drive safely and uh, pay attention to the road and maybe have a great conversation with a passenger. Yeah, you have, I, I think that's great. I love that kind of analogy is how maps have evolved over time, right? I think that's, that really kind of tells the story. But you also have, have talked about how, uh, how it's not just good enough to just show you where to go, right? Just, just the AR map of be in this lane, you know, follow that arrow around the corner because people want to see more. They want to see what's the next uh, event. Um, and they want to have context of where actually they are on that big electronic Rand Mac McNally map, right? So you guys have thought of that and, and, and provided for all that too. 
Yeah, exactly right. So not only do we give you visual safety warnings, a lane departure, and obstacle collision warnings, but we also give you POI, so context around the driver. And not only to the driver, also to the passenger. We have an immersive passenger experience that points out POIs of interest and for, you know searching for POIs. So the, the idea is really for the car to get a true understanding of its surroundings and bring that to the driver in a very effective, low cognitive sort of way. Get a better understanding of the surroundings and avoid any you know danger that, that we can see. With, with, our, with, our, with our solution. So great situational awareness. And when you have great situational awareness that's intuitive, it just makes things easier, less cognitive load, and, and, and safer, right? And more convenient, more pleasant, and kind of cool. Um, you know, we're bringing some pretty cool technologies into the vehicle too. One of the things we've been working on, whether it's traditional HUDs or AR HUDs, is building in eye tracking. So, you know, nobody wants that big camera pointing at your face and getting that big brother feeling. So we've been able to kind of, you know, package an IR camera in the HUD and be able to reflect that off of the mirrors or the, the films and, and see what you're doing. And, and that really becomes important in AR HUDs, right? So um, we can do very simple things like you get in the seat, we can adjust the HUD to your H point so you don't have to fool around with buttons or adjusters. It just knows where your H point, your eyes level is and, and adjust to it. And then dynamically, right? We can do dynamic distortion compensation as you're moving your head around, making sure the HUD images are following, you're tilting your head. Um, we can do parallax compensation. Uh, we can do personal identification. We know who you are, so we can set the vehicle up, the HUD and the experience for you. And then we have, you know, traditional or at least emerging driver monitoring system functions, drowsiness detection, cognitive load detection. So all of those, uh, that technology enables all these features that just make the whole experience more pleasant, more convenient, uh, and often feed right into your system uh, for your use. So you, you guys have some, uh, we also are bringing, sorry, I don't want to forget to mention this or I'll get in trouble, but we also have, you know, not just the eye tracking system, but we have a portfolio of HUDs, everything from traditional 2D, to two and a half D to multi-layer uh, image. And what the point of that is we can hit a cost point that gives you the feel of 3D augmented reality at a two and a half D as we move these augmented reality icons kind of through the planes. And it doesn't have to be a full 3D experience like a laser or a MEMS. So it's, it's really quite cool, it's quite cost effective. And I understand you know, that that's kind of what we're trying to do. You guys are bringing some cool cost saving solutions. I mean what you're able to do with the limited amount of sensors you're using is pretty amazing. You should talk about that. Yeah, Scott, actually, I love talking about this because I think that's fundamentally one of, our, one of our magic is that we run on the IVI ECU and we only run directly on the NPU. So if, you, if you're an OEM and you want to build an incredible experience that loads up the CPU and the GPU for a beautiful IVI experience, we run on a latent part of the chip today. And so there's no impact to put our AI models that are run purely on the edge and that give us that understanding of surroundings. Additionally, we don't need any other sensors. So we don't need a LiDAR, we don't need a radar, we don't need any of that. All we need is a single forward-facing camera of okay resolution um, and some basic vehicle signals that any car already has, like vehicle speed and maybe steering wheel angle. And from that, using our incredibly hyper-efficient AI that runs on the NPU, we can generate a scene map, and then also into that scene map, place objects in 3D in real time. And it's amazing what you can do with this kind of power. And what's really resonating with our partners is that they don't need additional parts. There's no, we don't need an additional chip. Like I said, we don't need radars or LiDAR. We can do all this on a latent compute in the chip. So why not put us in? And when they see the experience, when they experience AR navigation, it's pretty magical. It's kind of like a smartphone moment for me. It's tough to explain why you want it, but once you drive, you feel more relaxed. <laughs> you, you follow the road. You have great con you know, context awareness of where you're going. You know where the next turn is. You know which lane to be in. I think it's a win-win proposition both for consumers and for OEMs to not only differentiate themselves, but provide a safer driving experience for their customers. Yeah, I, well, I can certainly attest from Panasonic and PASA's perspective is the small footprint you guys have for integration, right? Working with you guys, we've been really impressed by the, the, the capabilities you can deliver, as you say, in a latent part of the chip that frees up all the room we need to do everything we want to do. So um, that, that's, that's certainly cool. And I also agree with your point. <coughs> you know, we, we know this about HUDs in general, but um, if you go out and survey people and you say, you know, do you want a HUD in your vehicle? They've never had a HUD. They go, no, why, why? I don't want a HUD, right? This isn't a, this isn't a uh, F-15. 
Um, then you give them a HUD and they, they never want another vehicle without it. I think uh, this experience with the augmented reality and the, na the augmented reality navigation you're working in, the object detection, the contextual awareness, it's, it's that same experience on steroids, right? Once you get into it and you feel it and you experience it and you feel that sense of joy and relaxation and you don't have to squint to read uh, street signs and, you know, for me who's always forgetting his glasses, not be able to read the street signs, right? It, it's just follow the arrow. It's really cool. And so um, I think you guys are doing a great job. You're bringing some really cool technologies. We love working with you. Uh, we love putting it in our demos. You know, all this for us is integrated into our full skip gen and e-cockpit platform. So, you know, all the work we're doing with OEMs, it's very easy to bring you guys along with it with the rest of the stuff we're working on. So um, we really enjoy working with you. So, um, you know, I guess the last thing to do here is invite everybody to come see it. If it's all about experience it and you'll never not want it, we got to get it out there and show it to people. So I know Panasonic, I'd encourage you as a call to action, everybody out there, come visit us. We'll have this drivable at CES. You get a chance to drive it and, and feel the magic yourself. And, and Gene, I think you guys are doing the same, yeah? Yep, so, uh, we're doing the exact same thing. We have a separate drivable vehicle, also powered by your skip chance. So thanks, Scott, for your continued partnership and support. Um, once, like I said, once you experience it, you'll understand why it's so impactful and why we believe it's next generation of navigation and in other experiences, and Scott, I think it's also worth mentioning, AR navigation is just the first experience. By having this this scene map, this contextual understanding of the area around you, using our SDK, which is exactly how we build our product, OEMs can add their own experiences, and partners like Panasonic can build their own experiences on top. So it's not just AR navigation, right? It's all these other things you can do as well once you have a contextual understanding of, of uh, the surroundings of the vehicle. And we think it's um, powerful, and uh, people will want it once they see it. Yep, I totally agree with you. You guys got some great engineers over there doing some really cool things. We love working with you. Thank you for joining me. And to everybody out in the audience, uh, come see us. Come see Gene. Come see me. Feel this. Sense the magic of, of the AR, and uh, you're never going to not want it. And uh, I know Panasonic and, and Fire Together are trying to do everything to make sure you do want it, and it doesn't break the bank, right? That's so, exactly right. Thanks, Scott, for having me here. Really appreciate it. And looking forward to continue working together. Thanks, Gene. Thanks for joining me. We love working with you guys. So let's, uh, let's keep up the good work and let's see everybody at CES. All right. See you there. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.